When you're trying to conceive naturally, it can be pretty hard not to start testing if you're pregnant like the day after you tried pretty much, right? Well, in this video, I am going to give you the symptoms of implantation so that you can keep busy and hold off till 13 days past ovulation and play detective to see if an egg has implanted or not. lovelies and welcome to another one of my videos in which I'll be teaching you how to recognize implantation symptoms because there are quite a few. After ovulation and conception, this little fertilized egg travels down the fallopian tube to your womb and there it implants and hangs out for the next nine months, right? But that takes about six to 10 days until it can actually implant and it can happen as late as day 11 and day 12. However, our body shows symptoms of when implantation happens and I want to tell you exactly what those symptoms are. The first is chart dip and second rise in temperature. So a lot of people, when they start their work day, they might be scrolling through Instagram or Facebook. Not me. I scroll through the charts of my patients on Kendara. Yeah, nerdy, right? <laughs> but I just love to see where everybody is and if they are just about to enter their fertile window, I wanna cheer them on. If they are past ovulation and I see their temperatures go up, I also cheer them on and I say, great, your temperatures look great. But then for me, the cherry on the pie, sorbet, whatever, the cherry on the something for me is obviously when I can see from a chart that somebody's pregnant. And some charts nobody will see as pregnancy charts, but because I've seen so many for me, it's like pregnant. But there is a specific thing that you can see as well and don't need to be a fertility homeopath for to recognize that there is a pregnancy going on. And that is the implantation dip. And I will show you down here what a chart looks like with a beautiful implantation dip. I asked my patient if I could show it to you because it looks so good. And you see that her implantation dip is at nine days past ovulation. And that is really the most common day eight, nine, 10 days past ovulation. But as I said, it can happen anywhere from six days until 10 and even 11 and 12 days. When an egg implants, our temperatures can really plummet. And you can see that because after ovulation, your temperature goes up all the time. And if you suddenly have this huge dip and afterwards it goes up again, then that is very likely a implantation dip. And that's especially the case if after that dip, your temperature goes higher than after the ovulation bit. That is what we call a triphasic chart because there are three phases, tri, three. The first phase is pre-ovulation, after that is after ovulation, after that is in, after implantation. Researching the internet, I saw that there are some statistics about that it happens to maybe only 25% of the cases. So if you don't get a beauty spot like this implantation dip, don't worry about it. But if you do have it, then that's a good sign, Missy. The second implantation symptom is something that I see all over the internet in all the fertility communities on Facebook, in all the forums, and that is implantation bleeding. Implantation bleeding, from what I read, seems to be the holy grail. A lot of women want to see implantation bleeding because it makes them feel like they are really pregnant. The sad thing, in my opinion though, is that sometimes women will actually start their period and they still hold on to hope when all the signs are there that they're not pregnant. So again, like with the implantation dip, don't hold on to this implantation bleeding too much. It does happen more often than with the implantation dip on your chart, about one in three women. But again, two out of three women never get implantation bleeding. Here's how you can tell the difference between implantation bleeding and a period. First of all, implantation bleeding is more like spotting. It's not actually a flow. So if you tend to get spotting before your period anyway, it can be easily confused. However, implantation bleeding will happen around implantation. So it can be as early as eight days past ovulation. So a full week before your period starts. If that's the case and you never get spotting then, then that could definitely be a sign that you have implantation bleeding going on. However, as I said, implantation bleeding can be as late as 12 days past ovulation. So that's about two days before you expect your period. 
So if you get implantation bleeding, then it's hard to distinguish it from a period that might be starting. Another thing you can look at is the quality of the spotting. Implantation bleeding will never be like a full flow. It won't be full red, it won't be ongoing, and there will definitely not be any clots. It will be more like I suggested earlier, like spotting. So it can be a bit brownish tinged, it can be discharged that has some streaks in it, or it can be pinkish. And it usually doesn't last longer than two days usually even just a couple of hours or just one day. The third thing that can suggest implantation is cramping. But again, it's the same as with bleeding. Because if you're used to getting cramping before your period, then how are you going to distinguish period cramps from implantation cramps, right? Well, first of all, if you never get cramping before your period, and especially like a week in advance, or like four days in advance, it could be implantation cramping. And this is because when the embryo implants into the uterine lining, a little bit of blood comes free and that irritates the uterus and that's what causes the cramping. But the cramping is never like you would expect with a period. It's always mild and it doesn't need to last very long either. It's important that you know that when it is implantation cramping, that it never gets intenser. It just stays at this mild, low grade twinges maybe. Another way that you can know if you've got implantation going on is if you start to develop pregnancy symptoms. And this can honestly be a little bit vague, but on the other hand, if a week before your period you suddenly get nausea and you get constipated and you have mega, mega sore boobs like you've never had before, then girl, those can definitely be pregnancy symptoms. And if you cross check them with an implantation dip or having a triphasic chart and having implantation spotting slash bleeding, then those could definitely be early pregnancy signs. Now, if you have nausea right after ovulation or you get sore breasts right then, then that is not likely anything to do with implantation. That has more likely to do with progesterone going up in your body. So definitely Definitely start looking for symptoms around implantation time. Anything that was before that is not likely a sign of you being pregnant. I think it could be fun and interesting to do a video on early pregnancy symptoms, when you can have them, what kind you can have. But if you would like to see that video, let me know in the comments and then I'll shoot it for you. And then lastly, this is maybe a little bit obvious, but it's the HCG test, your home pregnancy test. Usually HCG can be picked up on a home pregnancy test three to four days after implantation. So if you did get that beautiful implantation dip on your chart or you got some symptoms that made you suggest that you may have had an implantation going on, three to four days after that, you can start testing. I usually, however, recommend not to start testing until 13 days past ovulation. But as I said, in theory, you should be able to pick up on it earlier if implantation happened on the early side. And that chart I just showed you, the nine days past ovulation implantation dip, this lady got a positive pregnancy test the very next day. Because an implantation dip on your chart is not that common, I also wanted to show you a chart of a pregnant lady that didn't have an implantation dip at all so that you can feel encouraged. All right, so those are all the implantation symptoms that you can recognize, but as I said, with all of these symptoms, if you don't have them, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not pregnant. There are plenty of women that have turned out to be pregnant without having any of these symptoms because how else would babies be born without their moms even knowing they were pregnant? That still stays a mystery to me, but everybody knows that that happened. There are entire shows on this phenomenon. However, if you do check the boxes on a couple of these symptoms, then that can give you some sense of assurance that you'll likely soon get your big fat positive. And if you don't have these symptoms, then you can kind of get used to the idea that perhaps you need to be trying another cycle. If you want to know more about how you can support implantation, then definitely head on over to this playlist. And if you want to learn more about natural fertility and how you can boost it, don't forget to subscribe because I bring out new videos every Thursday. And if you hit the notification bell, then you'll be the first to hear it when I upload new content. And in the meantime, see you in the next video. Bye.